Dear students, fellow parents and professionals, ladies and gentlemen, this is the first time that I'm going to say a few words about my grandfather to an audience I'm meeting for the first time. I was, I must say, uh, somewhat hesitant to speak on the subject, despite having had the privilege of knowing my legendary grandfather and believing, and even more so now, in his values and the qualities with which he li lived his life. And this is because one of my spiritual teachers had mentioned to me that if you are going to speak on the basis of knowing and believing, you may at best, if at all, touch the minds of the audience or whoever you are speaking to. But if you have to touch the hearts, then you have to go beyond knowing and believing. You have to go into the stage of practicing. You have to go beyond janana and manana into the stage of palana. So that is the reason why I was a bit hesitant. In Jainism also, we have the Samyak Gyan, Samyak Darshan, and Samyak Charitra. It means that if you have only Gyan, knowledge, if you have only belief and views, it's not going to help unless you convert that to Charitra and you practice it. But I must say that I am delighted to be here as I find this program enriching and it is really very well conceived. And it, it is thoughtful that we started this morning with a lecture on spirituality or lectures on spirituality because spirituality gives stillness, stability and also strength to the mind to take the right decisions. If you have, our mind is like a sponge. If you put water, it has a limited capacity to absorb. Similarly, our mind also has limited capacity. And if we fill our mind in the morning with positive thoughts, then we will be able to lead the rest of the day in a much better way. And just the way our body requires diet, exercise, and sleep, similar is the case with our mind. Our mind also requires silence. Our mind requires positive thoughts. Our mind requires meditation. So I'm uh, once again very happy to be here. And let me uh, take this opportunity to share with you the story of my grandfather in a very uh, uh, brief manner. You know, from a small beginning, starting with textile business, my grandfather established a diverse business group, which today has turnover of about little under two billion US dollars. And after he established several of our textile mills, he established Atul Limited in 1947, exactly a month after India became independent. And his dream was to make India self-reliant. He wanted to generate employment on a very large scale and create wealth in the poor parts of India, in the rural parts of India. And that is how he acquired about 1,200 acres of land in 1947 and built this complex which uh, is uh, considered to be one of the best and one of the biggest in Asia today. Uh, it also happens to be the first private sector company to have been inaugurated by the first Prime Minister of India on March 17, 1952. My grandfather led a very, uh, uh, he led a multidimensional life and he made seminal contributions to industry, to religion, to uh, economy and education. For example, he was the founder along with Mr. Vikram, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai of IIM Ahmedabad. He also was the first chairman of IIT Mumbai. And he established several institutions of national importance, le leaving an enduring and enriching legacy behind him. My grandfather lost his father when he was only 17. His father died at the age of 48, suddenly. And, but he made sure that he Continue, and he was in uh, college. He had to leave in second year of college, but he continued to learn English and he made books and learning 
his lifelong companions. He, he got married at the age of 21, but he did not want to have children for eight years till he achieved a sense of stability in his business. And he sent my father and my uncle in those days during World War II to MIT and Harvard so that they can educate themselves much better than he was able to do. Let me take this uh, opportunity to share with you very briefly a few qualities with which he led his life. The first one is discipline. Every day, and I saw him for 20 years, every day he got up at 5 o'clock. So he had a very uh, 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 great discipline. He led a very, very regular life. He ate in moderation. He exercised. Today we spoke about exercise. He exercised every single day. I have not seen him once when he did not exercise. And every night at 10.30, he was off to bed. You know, today, nowadays, we see something quite different. Even yesterday, I was told something similar happened here. But I think it makes a lot of difference if we practice discipline in our own lives from young age. Also, you must have heard of this marshmallow experiment that was carried out by Stanford University. And they proved that children who practiced delayed, delaying gratification did very well in the set scores. They had put marshmallow, they asked some children to come in and set that you take, after 15 minutes, if you take marshmallow, you will get two. And those children who waited, there were quite a few who took it right away, but those children who waited, they have done very well in their set scores, is what the experiment showed. The second quality of my grandfather was that he never wasted anything. Whether it was food, whether it was money, for example, Whenever he traveled by train, at a particular station, there were gu uh, guavas and uh, anar, and uh, the vendor will give some salt. He will only take the salt that is required for him, and the rest of the salt he will give to our, uh, at our home in Bombay to the kitchen so that it is used again. My mother, uh, my mother is a surgeon. She came back from the UK and uh, uh, got, uh, after marriage, bought train ticket of the next station. She was going to get off at station A, but she took the station B ticket, which was a little longer and paid only one rupee fifty paisa more. And my grandfather told her that this is not to waste money. So it was just a matter of one rupee fifty paisa. But still, he was extremely careful about money. But at the same time, when it came to building IIM or IIT or whichever other institutions, he did not even blink his eyelid to donate crores of rupees. So he, he had that self-discipline. For example, I can tell you one more story just about a year before he passed away. He died at the age of 87. And uh, when he was 86, he, he, an astrologer had told him that he may not live beyond one year more. And uh, he, his shoes had uh, broken. And he decided not to buy new shoes because he knew that he's not going to live beyond one, uh, one more year. So this is how he practiced uh, thriftiness. But more importantly, he did not even waste his thoughts. He did not waste words. Mr. S. S. Natkarni, who was the chairman of ICI, ICICI, he told me that my grandfather, whenever he will be in the board meeting, he was a founder director of ICICI Bank that we now know. And uh, he will speak in very brief, and whatever decision my grandfather will mention in the board meetings were invariably true because he had practiced silence in his mind, is what he told me the other day, just before he passed away, actually. The third quality that my grandfather practiced was excellence. If you see any of his works that he undertook, every work, every piece of work reflected excellence. He had both the vision as well as the eye for details. Just to share with you, like for example, if he's building a building, then he will know what ought to be the riser in the staircase. 
So he was having a great eye for details. He renovated our Jain temples for more than 15 years. And uh, all the collaborations that he got for our companies were very, very good com uh, companies, multinational companies. The fourth quality, I'm going to talk about only five today, which are the main uh, qualities. He had impeccable integrity. You know, he established several publicly held companies. And he was sitting in uh, one of the uh, companies, Arvind. You must have heard of Arvind Limited, which produces uh, textiles. Even if he is writing a letter, a personal letter, he is going to, he will not use the ink that is bought by the mill. Because that is not professional, that is not business. Even the stamp that went on the cover, on the envelope, was bought personally. So he was uh, having a very high level, impeccable level of integrity. And finally, in integrity also, it is not just about financial, but about thoughts, words, and deeds. He had complete alignment in his words, what he spoke, what he thought, and what he did. I am not sure if you are aware, but it is proven that if we speak something else and we are thinking something else, then our body produces toxins which are bad for our own body. So we have to be very careful that we, whatever we think, what we speak and what we do, we need to have complete alignment in that. And the last one, that he, uh, his life was beyond self. He did not think. He personally made sure that he lived a very, very simple life. If you opened his wardrobe, he had only three pairs of clothes, which lasted for three years. So he, he never spent on himself. I'm not sure if you are aware about this, but the, our mind, human mind, has two contradictory uh, tendencies. One is that of acquisition, and the other is that of giving. And as we evolve, as we advance in our human evolution, the second tendency, the spirit of giving, takes predominance over the first tendency, that is, of acquisition. And he belonged to that category. He had developed that kind of ability in him where giving was much more predominant than taking. And let me just close my uh, uh, talk today uh, by uh, putting uh, uh, two I, de deities, and I'm sure uh, particularly those who are from India will know, one is the deity of Saraswati, that is the goddess of knowledge, and the other is the deity of uh, uh, wealth, Lakshmi. Now, if you take the first one, m many times we go after money, but first we have to go after knowledge. And I'm not sure if you are uh, familiar with this deity, but uh, uh, the, the Saraswati, de the deity of knowledge, is very symbolic. The, the seat of Saraswati is lotus. And lotus has the ability to remain nirlep, remain detached, even though it grows in mud. And therefore, the disciple of Saraswati, the seeker of knowledge, will ensure that he may live or she may live in a materialistic world, but will not be materialistic himself or herself. Secondly, the, the vehicle is a swan. Swan is also very symbolic. Swan has the ability to separate milk from water. That is separating good from bad. So anyone who's the disciple of Saraswati will make sure that he has that discretion, the ability to separate good from bad. Thirdly, if you see in one hand there is book and it shows that the disciple of Saraswati will be a lifelong learner not be just bookish. I can tell you a story about my grandfather. He told me that once he was in the UK and he did not know a place where to go, so he asked a policeman. And he, since he was in a hurry, he went away. My grandfather was walking away. And the policeman called him back and said that you forgot to tell me sorry. Uh, you forgot to tell me thank you. And since that day, he was mentioning that he never forgot. So the disciple of Saraswati will be a lifelong learner. And because many times when we learn and we have knowledge, 
we become arrogant. And therefore, in the other hand, there is beads. That is mala. And that is, the, that is signifying humility. So the disciple of Saraswati will be on the one hand very knowledgeable, but on the other hand, he will be extremely humble. And finally, the, in the two hands, there is veena, that is the musical instrument. So the disciple of Saraswati, wherever he will go, will bring accord, will bring harmony, will never bring discord. So this, in a way, reflected the personality of my grandfather. So I thought it is very apt. And Lakshmi, many times we misunderstand as money. But the goddess of knowledge, Lakshmi is not just, wealth is not just money. Money is one of the eight. In Jainism, we have eight types of Lakshmis. So we have Dhanu Lakshmi, we have Arogya Lakshmi. Arogya Lakshmi is the health, as we discussed a little while ago. Someone already mentioned that we have to be extremely regular about our physical being. Also, uh, uh, Graha Lakshmi, we must have peace at our home. We must be very affectionate with our uh, fellow family members and other people. And also Yasha Lakshmi, we may get Yash, we may get fame, but we must not get uh, uh, carried away with that. And then there are four internal ones. So if you are interested, you can, I'm sure if you go to any website, I did not want to take too much of time. But uh, these two deities, if you leave it in your room, I think they will r remind you of the, the, what they stand for. So thank you very much. I take this opportunity to uh, be here. And thank you, Mr. Shiv Kemka for, and Mrs. Gauri Ishwaran for inviting me here. And all the best to all of you. Thank you.